A couple years ago, I take my parents to a nice seafood place for their anniversary. When we arrive, I'm not thrilled to be seated directly behind a kid, I'd guess he was between 7 or 8, seated with his mother across from him. The way the restaurant is set up, seats are two back-to-back -back benches, with a high back between them, and then a table. So I'm sharing a piece of furniture with this kid who's sitting behind me. Just after we were seated, he started rocking violently swinging his legs to pound them against a seat board, where your legs go. The rocking was causing everything to move, our seats connected, I was being assaulted by not only the noise of the little percussionist and the rocking. People at another table started giving me sympathetic glances, the waitress, hushed, said, they've been here a while, hopefully, it won't be much longer. Around us, people are looking over and this kid is loud. People start saying things to the waitress who goes to summon a manager. It didn't appear to be any disability. This kid wasn't having a seizure or doing anything that appeared neurodivergent. He was just acting like a bored kid. Mom staring at her phone, eating her meal. The kid has a glass of water and bread in front of him. Bored. I hear him ask for the phone and she snaps I'm using it. Multiple times can we leave. He's ignored. Our apps come and I'm on a goddamn ship, rocking back and forth, the noise is giving me a headache. I very gently turn around, face the boy, peering around the high back of my seat, and I say, kindly. Hey, bud. Not sure if you realize, but our seats are actually connected by this back part here. When you're thumping your feet, it's making my whole seat move back and forth. Do you think you could stop, please? I'd really like to eat without spilling. I thought I was nice, direct, spoke on his level. Before he could even respond, he did stop. His mom jumped up screaming at me. Who the hell do you think you are to speak to my child? She's screaming what kind of psycho tell someone else's child what to do? I honestly thought she might attack me. She caused such a scene. The manager ran over, ushered her to the lobby. The cops arrived, told her she'd be leaving. Not sure she got her food, she also didn't pay. I got kudos from the people dining nearby, who said the kid had been horrible, tormenting everyone a long time. I didn't see anything wrong with what I'd done, but since retelling the story, many people have said. You never talk to another person's kid. You should have said something to the mom. Is it wrong to politely ask a kid to do something? Multiple, seemingly sane, people tell me that I was in the wrong, I don't think so. Not the idiot. She is being a negligent parent. I don't understand this mentality. If you're not watching your kid in public, someone is gonna say something. Once a target, my husband asked a kid to get off of an unused cashier's station. He was playing on the belt or jumping up and down all over the register and grocery loading platform. He could have been seriously hurt and none of the employees would tell him to stop. My husband said the same thing, hey kiddo, not a good idea, you should get down, and next thing I know the dad was there physically threatening my husband. You weren't wrong, per se, but this is always a risk when you see a misbehaving kid. Nine times out of ten, the parent isn't paying attention anyway, hence the misbehavior, so when someone finally says something, either the parent is immediately embarrassed and that comes out as angry, or the parent is annoyed that now they have to pay attention to their kid, and that makes them angry too. And sometimes, people are just buttheads and let their kids act like buttheads to keep the family butthead tradition alive. Not the idiot physically threatening my husband. I have five kids, three bio, two bonus. I would never allow this sort of behavior, I'm sure my kids have been annoying in public, but I have zero issues taking them and leaving because it usually is boredom, and that's not going to get any better. That said, I would not care in the least if someone addressed my kid this way. And I've done it with other kids. Kids aren't idiots. You really can just talk to them, with age-appropriate terms or words, just like you would an adult. That mom was not parenting and didn't like to have that pointed out, clearly. Long story short, my family, 35, 12, 10, and I, 32, just recently moved into a new apartment complex. Our unit is at the very back of the building, at the back of the property, so behind us is just a wooded area, nobody lives there. At the very back of our unit and the one across from ours is a small balcony that faces out towards this wooded area. Because it is the way the building is constructed, you can't see onto another person's balcony unless you go to the stairs and lean over the railing, otherwise the wall blocks you. Across from our unit is a family of four, a young-looking mother, her husband, and their two children who are both under the age of two. 
I haven't had the chance to go introduce myself, because I think one of their babies is a newborn, and honestly, mama seems exhausted. Anyway, a couple of nights ago, I made a horrific discovery. Went outside to call the boys in for dinner, and found them both with their upper bodies flung over the railing, staring into our neighbor's balcony. I grab both by their pants, and ask them just what they think they're doing, and that's when I see it. From their vantage point, they could see straight into the neighbor lady's balcony, where she was sat completely topless, with underwear on listening to headphones. I was livid. Not with her, but with the boys. The way I see it, she's on her own personal property, where no one is supposed to be able to see, and not drawing any attention to herself. Plus, if she's breastfeeding, I get not having a topper bra on. It's tedious to remove every few hours, and for every feeding in between. And who wears pants in their own house? Anyway, I digress. I pulled the boys in the house, and took away their video games and phones until further notice, and told my husband immediately when he got home. But surprisingly, he was mad at me. Saying boys would be boys and the lady should have some decency to wear clothes outside, and asked me to speak to her about it. I ripped him a new one, and spent the night on the couch, after which he apologized, but the boys still seem upset with me. Am I the idiot for punishing them, but not saying anything to the neighbor? Okay, your husband's boys will be boys comment is stupid and needs to go. That being said, your boys are still children, well, one's a pre-teen, and it is natural for them to be curious about a semi-naked woman. What you need to teach them is that it's okay to have this curiosity, whether they be male or female, by the way, Mr. OP's husband, but it is not okay to stare at their neighbor like that. This is also a good time to bring up consent. So in a nutshell, not the idiot, but you need to work on educating them more than punishing them right now. Absolutely punish their butts if they do this crap again. Not the idiot. The boys and husband are completely in the wrong here. The boys invaded someone's privacy, and the husband defended them with the worst possible argument. You really should explain to your sons about boundaries and gender equality, and perhaps even you can explain your husband's reaction by telling your sons how women are blamed even when they are victims, and how they should never do that. I'm glad you're there and your husband isn't there on his own, we'd have two more disrespectful boys in the world if he was. Not the idiot. I do think it is important for you as parents to teach them to respect boundaries. What if they were doing something in private and others were watching and ogling? What if you were doing something, would you want other people to go out of their way to invade your privacy? Maybe talk about why it's wrong to do that, not necessarily punish them, yet. But if they do multiple times where they don't seem to respect boundaries or privacy, then maybe explain there will be whatever punishment. Over the weekend, I, 23, went to dinner with some of my dad's relatives who I don't see very often. My dad has never gotten along with my uncle, his brother, and I haven't either. He's rude, condescending, and we don't agree with him on a lot of things. Normally I just try to ignore him. However, at dinner, my uncle asked me about my car I had shown up in in my new job. I started my job a little over a year ago after graduating college, and I worked hard for it. I make a lot of money, and I'm proud of that. Software engineer. I recently bought myself my dream car I've always wanted. Uncle asked, how much are they paying you anyway, in a condescending tone, and I just point blank told him how much I make. I guess I was supposed to laugh and say something like oh, enough, but I told him the number. He started going off on a rant about how number 23 year old should make that much money, and how stupid my company is for paying me that much. I got pissed and said, I deserve every penny I make. I work hard and most people can't do what I do. Well, I guess this really made my uncle angry, because after dinner I received a text from my cousin, saying I had been really rude at dinner, and insulted my uncle's intelligence. My dad sided with me, since he hates my uncle anyway, but my sister agreed with my cousin and said I shouldn't have said how much money I make or talk to my uncle the way I did because it was impolite. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The exact same thing happened to me. My grandfather asked my dad how much he paid for my car in a very rude way like like my dad is spoiling me, but he said he didn't buy it and me being offended, told him I make a lot of money, said exact amount like you, being a full-time trader, my dad is also a trader, so us being a team makes good money, he went on saying money won't last me, I disagreed and defended my job. This conversation ended in him telling me I make too much money, and I'm gonna end up a player or an addict, and I must marry someone instantly to prevent that. 
I'm 20 so hell that. Not the idiot. Once a friend asked me how much my parents make, we were like 11, I answered that my parents don't tell me the exact number, but my mom makes about insert number here, and my dad makes about insert another number here. Later on another friend told me she was telling everyone of how much of a spoiled brat I am because my parents make so much money and how I tell everyone they make way more than the minimum wage but not enough to be considered rich. My friends told her she asked for something and I gave her the answer and to stop being like that. Not the idiot. But this is a very good example of why it's not a good idea to tell people how much money you make. Your finances are no one's business. Obviously, your uncle is an insecure idiot and you shouldn't feel bad about defending yourself and how hard you've worked. And it's not like you were intentionally parading your salary he asked you a question and you answered it. In these situations, even with family, it's usually best to be vague. One because of this situation and two because when word gets out you might be the one that family members start asking for financial help from. A few months ago, my brother and now sister-in-law announced their intention to marry. The invitation to the wedding stated no dress code. Wear whatever is comfortable for you. In hindsight, I think they put that there since the event was at a lake. I didn't think much of the disclaimer at the time because it's a wedding, I should dress respectably for such an occasion, and I have a healthy selection of formal wear in my wardrobe. I chose a beautiful blue three-piece suit. Yesterday was the wedding. When I showed up, I noticed everyone was dressed way more casually than I was. I'm talking polos, many people wearing shorts, only a few people wearing slacks and buttoned down. I did feel a little out of place. My brother was wearing a suit with no tie, and my sister-in-law was wearing a modest white dress. The only comment I got on my attire during the event was a joke from my dad saying I look like I'm marrying the sister-in-law, but that was it. A few hours ago, I got a call from sister-in-law. Holy crap, she is pissed at me. She was asking why I dressed like a pimp, I upstaged her and my brother, and I stuck out like a sore thumb on the photos. I referenced the invite and how she said there was literally no dress code and I was dressing respectfully. She was going on about how that implicitly meant not formal. I told her that she should have specified not formal to leave less interpretation freedom. She asked if I was that retarded. I told her that just because she's family doesn't give her the right to blame a miscommunication on me and call me a retard. I hung up. She spammed my phone with calls, so I blocked her and texted my brother I'll talk to her when she's ready to be less verbally abusive. Was I in the wrong? Not the idiot, this is definitely a communication fail on their part. I think some people assume suits and dresses are horrid and no one really wants to wear those things, so if you say wear whatever you want, everyone will feel liberated from the tyranny of formal wear and will magically come wearing the correct level of casual, but still somewhat nice. Pinda like how my mom asks me wouldn't you feel more comfortable in jeans, but that's her polite way of signaling to me, I'm overdressed and she wants me to put on jeans and a sweater like everyone else. No dress code means there's no dress code. It sounds like your sister-in-law wishes she had said casual or maybe business casual, but she didn't. You dressed like most adults would dress for a wedding without being told. Sure, you could have taken off the jacket and tie once you saw how everyone else was dressed, but again, there was no dress code and you were trying to be respectful. So I'm not going to call you an idiot just for that. Not the idiot. Not the idiot. They said no dress code and she grossly overreacted. You made a minor error on a subjective and vaguely communicated matter out of good intentions. Someone from the wedding party should have quietly addressed you on the matter instead of flipping out after the fact. Formal attire is the standard for a wedding, so it's quite foreseeable that guests might default to nice formal clothes if instructions are vague or non-existent. You did not do enough to qualify as an idiot. She did. Eight years ago, my 29 sister, 32, got pregnant. The father wasn't involved and my sister didn't want the baby, but she also couldn't bring herself to terminate or adopt out to strangers. She approached me and my now ex-husband and asked if we would be willing to adopt her child. We weren't sure as we were concerned this would lead to issues down the line, but my sister insisted that it wouldn't, so we ultimately agreed. Before Lucy was a year old, my husband left us both because my sister lied about Lucy's father. When Lucy was four, I got together with my wife and we married last year. 
My sister has said that seeing me and my wife with Lucy, who is now 7, confirms to her that she made the right decision. When I first adopted Lucy, my husband and I told my sister that we wanted multiple children, which she said she was fine with at the time, but now my wife and I are looking into our options, and my sister objects. My sister has been staying with us since July because her boyfriend kicked her out. She keeps asking Lucy if she's sure she wants siblings, Lucy has said that she does, and telling us she's worried we won't be able to give Lucy what she needs, and then today happened. We had an online consultation with a fertility clinic to talk about sperm donation. We told my sister about it and asked her to keep an eye on Lucy while we talked. The wifi went randomly on and off three times during the session, booting us out of the call each time. The third time, my wife went to check it and saw my sister holding the power cord and Lucy trying to plug it back in. Lucy saw my wife and said, Auntie keeps turning the wifi off. Wife plugged it back in, but we could no longer get into the session, and we got an email from the doctor, saying that if the wifi is going to be this bad, then maybe we should try a more local clinic, as we can't do online consultations. When we confronted my sister she admitted that she wants Lucy to be an only child, so she has 100% of our undivided attention, and then said in a sarcastic tone, forgive me for only wanting what's best for my daughter, to which we responded that Lucy isn't her daughter. Things escalated until I said that my sister should go stay with our parents, and my wife drove her to their place. Since leaving, a few hours ago, she's apologized and begged to come back, and my parents have also asked me to take her back, but I've refused. They've all called me an arsehole for kicking my own sister out after one argument, because now she's unable to get to work, no car and too far to walk, and she's back in her childhood room, while at our place she had a studio to herself behind the house. Am I the idiot? I'm 100% curious about her opinion of you not giving Lucy enough of your time if you have siblings for Lucy. Because it somewhat sounds like she resents having had to deal with siblings growing up. As the younger sister, did you get a lot of resentment from her? Was she the look at me, look at me child at your big events? As an only child, I'm on Lucy's side, give me a sibling. Not the idiot and frankly get big sister, to take a look at her life, and see what she can fill it with instead of fiddling around with yours. Not the idiot. Your sister needs to know her place, since she made the decision to have Lucy adopted by you. She doesn't get to have a say in your own family, because she's not part of it, she's just Lucy's aunt now, and she needs to realize that. But OP, I suggest that you also talk to her about it and help her come to terms to the fact that Lucy isn't her child now. If you do let her live with you again, set the boundaries and be firm about them. Best of luck to you and your wife, OP. Not the idiot, your sister doesn't have the right to make this decision. Lucy is your daughter, even your daughter calls her auntie. She is excited about the idea of a sibling, and by the sounds of it, you have talked to her a fair bit about it. Maybe get in contact with the clinic again and be truthful with them that a spiteful relative that is no longer around was trying to sabotage the consultation. I'm guessing for you, not to be going locally, that this place is kind of the best of the best for you, 